This here is my main PC, and as you can probably tell, it is not the best of cases. In fact, you're probably sitting here and like, what is this case, Brian? I've, I've never seen it before. Well, this is the remnants of a custom build that I did quite a while ago. And so what happened with the history of this build was it started out beautiful and then it went from bad to worse to now to, uh, if you guys know old school cars, they've got a thing called limp mode. So this thing is in limp mode where <laughs> it just functions and that's all it really does. In terms of aesthetics, it's really needing a big touch up. And this is where we are going in with the new Corsair 7000D. Now this case right here has the option to mount up to three 420 mil radiators. So you can have so much water cooling in this thing if you wish to. And we're gonna be using one of those 420 mil mounts to mount a H170i Elite Capellex RGB water cooler. So we're gonna be changing up a few things in this build in the process, cleaning everything down to, and this old case here, we are finally gonna put this to rest. I actually forgot, I, I, I built this so long ago, I think it was like a Corsair uh, 780T, if memory serves me correctly. I mean, well, what's left of it. So we're going from a 780T to now a 7000D, and this is one of Corsair's biggest cases they have released to date. So let's go through the case and see if what looks like perfection ends up actually being perfection. And now it's time for the best part of the build, and that is the tech. Yes, loving. So uh, at the start I said we could fit three 420 mil rads and technically we can, we just gotta improvise. And here we are now the next day with the 7000D now set up as the new background prop PC, but it's not just a prop PC. I thought like coming into this build, I've got to admit, I was thinking, okay, this is gonna be another decent RGB PC that doesn't really do anything special, but I came out of this thinking, wow, this build just looks so clean and it has the RGB, 
but it's not too cheesy. And that's the look that this build will give off. Very clean. And of course, all the options are there if you want to build the PC you want to do. Now, we'll say this is a full tower ATX case, so it will support EATX and a lot of more options in terms of six hard drives, 3.5 inch drive bays, and you've also got an additional three SSD trays at the back. So either nine SSDs in total or six hard drives, and you can remove those completely if you're going for a hard driveless build like we've done here. And if you actually want to change this front uh, sliding portion here to be uh, pushing air, say for instance, you've got a 480 mil at the front, you can actually take that out and Corsair have included a bracket to then have airflow drive up from the bottom and into the build. Now, we've gone with a bit of a different concept here in that we've got the two rear fans, which would be traditionally outflowing air. They're actually intake. And then we've got the three RGB fans at the front as outtake. So that's sort of like it's a reverse setup because I really wanted to take advantage of the H170i's RGB and I didn't want too much RGB in this build. But let us know in the comments what you guys think of the aesthetics and what we put together here. But it's time now, of course, if you're getting into a case, you wanna know the most important thing, and that is the temperatures, especially if you're outlaying the kind of money on a case that the 7000D commands, which in America is about 260 USD. In Australia, it's about 325 Aussie dollars, including GST. And here's where we saw the temperatures that with the glass panel on versus off with the CPU test, we saw no difference. It was 92 degrees versus 92 degrees. Now, keep in mind, you're like, well, Brian, that's hot for a CPU, but actually this is 18 cores, 36 threads overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz with the AVX2 instruction sets going in Cinebench R23. So that's why the power consumption drawer is so high as well as the temperatures. So the fact that we were able to get the same temperatures means that the glass and the design of the case isn't hindering the temperatures whatsoever if you set things up properly. And I'm gonna say if you set things up properly because what we had here with the GPU actually was a big difference when it came to the way we set it up because I'm not gonna blame the 7000D for this because this the sheer size of the RTX 3080 was that it was so close to the glass. So the airflow was restricted. So if you wanna push your GPU forward, just make sure it's not like a three and a half slot cooler like the RTX 3080 that we're using here. So if it's two slots cooler, you'll see much better temps. And I'll pull up the graphs for you here where you can see that if we mounted the GPU back, we only got three degrees higher. So 63 degrees versus 66 degrees. But then when we mounted it right at the front, and I had to do this because I have to have my Elgato capture card for recording videos like this. Or if I want to add in, say, USB to other PCIe slots in the future, then I'll have to have those free PCIe slots spare. Because if I do mount the GPU vertically and push it back, then I am going to then have um, only really the top slot available, but they're actually on this motherboard since it's X299, there isn't that top slot available. So there's those options there, you do have them, but keep in mind when you are going with this kind of build, if you've got a massive GPU, you might have to keep the glass off. And for me, since it is a background prop, I am going to keep the glass off because if it is in the shot, it's just gonna be so reflective that it's gonna be very distracting for the actual main A-roll shot that we're doing here of the subject. And with the side panel, it is tinted tempered glass. They are going with the thicker five mil standard. So it will make your RGB shine really nice at nighttime. However, keep in mind it's reflective because it's glass. But I will say my first critiquing point with the build, and there's only one of two critiquing points I have, is the shroud on the power supply, the cover there. They've gone with a tinted cover for the power supply, but it looks like when you've got a power supply like the HX1000, since it does have the white label there, it makes it look like it's been weathered. But since it is dark enough in the shot like this, you'll see it doesn't really come out at all in the background unless you pay particular attention to it. Though that critiquing point out of the way, there's only one other critiquing point I have for this case, and that comes in the form of that radiator mount there with the 420 mil. As we could see in this video, we did mount a 420 mil rad and it did mount flush. Everything was absolutely fine, but there wasn't the mounting holes on that bracket. So if Corsair could add those mounting bracket holes in there, it would definitely make for a great combo with the H170i, their best uh, CPU cooler on the market with I'd say one of their best cases on the market. It's a absolutely amazing combo that they can offer, except the support isn't there from the get-go. But if you wanna make what we've done here happen, you will have to get the drill out and start drilling. 
But that said, let's get onto the really good points that impressed me about this case. And first of all is the build quality in terms of the three dust filters on the top, bottom and side. They're all magnetic, all really high quality. You've also got one down the bottom where your power supply is but that is not magnetic, that's actually detachable. And then simply moving on to the rear of the case, the modularity, you've got the ability there to cover up all your rear cables with an additional panel and the cable management and routing is super easy. Even if you're like me and you do cable management very quickly, you can still get a really tidy outfit in the end with no resistance on the back panel, nothing blocking your way from closing up the build. Then of course you've got all that extra room to route the cables and the side of the case there will pay particular attention to the grommets that they've used, or should I say grommet, because they've made all those side grommets just one, and so it doesn't come off. I've built in PCs over time where those grommets come off and there's such a pain to get back on. These were pretty much not coming off at all. And the way they've designed it is it makes it look like in some areas, it's all individually grommeted, but it's actually one piece. So your cables will look really good once they go through that grommet. So continuing where the motherboard tray is, you've got the option there with the GPU to either mount it vertically in two different positions, or of course your traditional horizontal position, all of which are really easy to do in a full-size ATX case, believe it or not. And we've got good clearance underneath the bottom of the GPU. So I know I've built in the past where vertical mounts, it's been a incredibly tight fit between that GPU vertical mount bracket and the bottom of the case, which if you have that touching directly, it's gonna cause issues. So this is not an issue for the 7000D. And then lastly, there's a heap of different extras included with the case in terms of covering up cables on the side, which included by default, and then there's a cover beside those cable covers, which is covering the 420mm rad, but we decided to remove that because we had to install that radiator. Then if you're talking about fans out of the box, this comes with three 140mm fans connected to a fan hub, which works in the sense that it's actually a repeater. So if you plug this into one fan head from your motherboard, it will repeat the same PWM signal, meaning that you can control all six fans from that one fan hub and not worry about power issues, and it will still mimic the setting that you have on your motherboard in the BIOS, whether you're using tuning software in Windows. And then the last point to talk about is the front and back panels are both push pin and they're on hinges. And I would recommend removing them if you're gonna do your whole PC build because they both are quite heavy. In the case of the rear, we did actually have the build falling over when we had no components in it. So I would recommend taking those both off before you do your build. But the push pin element, I actually prefer this over the magnetic element because once they're closed, they don't accidentally open up, which I've had with screwless magnetic side panels in the past. Though with all that out of the way, I will say this build has been very refreshing as a PC enthusiast to see a return or at least some focus from the industry back to full-sized EATX cases. And this one just hits the mark in all aspects. I absolutely love what Corsair have done with the 7000D, even though it's expensive, at least the uh, face price of 260 USD or 325 Aussie dollars, I think versus the competition in full size cases, it comes in with a competitive price point, but also an amazing build quality. And also the utility that this thing offers is incredible. So I think they've absolutely nailed it. I'd give it a nine out of 10 personally. There was two critiquing points that I mentioned previously in this review, but everything else from start to finish, this is a well-designed case with everything just attaching and detaching perfectly. They've done a great job. Though with that said, do let us know in the comments section below, what do you guys think of the 7000D? What do you think of the build that we've got now for the new editing rig at Tech Yes City? Do you think I've done a nice job or would you change a few things? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, but I will say one more thing, and that is I like to see this return to full-size towers. I mean, the whole industry has been going in the route of mini ITX, and as much as I love mini ITX and all the development there, for me personally, I love the full-size ATX options. I've always been a massive fan of bigger cases, and I think there's just been so much focus on mid towers and mini ITXs. It is just a breath of fresh air, just like this question of the day here. And I know it's going to talk about problems, but they are a breath of fresh air for me. I deal with computer problems almost all day, every day. But we've got here the question of the day from Alex van der Koo, and they ask, what about a workstation where the input freezes, such as you type a sentence and then several seconds later, the letters start to appear on the screen. Same with the mouse clicks. So they go on to talk about their computer having problems. It's an i5-7500, 24 gig of RAM, one terabyte uh, M.2 SSD. And basically they're saying that they do video editing 
And when it comes to a PC and having stuttering and issues, I would go straight away to testing out the hardware first. So in this case, I'd get something like Ida 64, do a stress test for a few hours, make sure temperatures are not too high, things are not throttling like the CPU or the memory is not failing, and then make sure also your GPU temperatures are fine and they're not throttling as well since Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, does utilize GPU acceleration. So if your GPU is not working right, then Premiere Pro could not be working right either. However, that said, if since you are video editing and I'd look at that and say, is an i5 four core four thread enough for video editing, especially in 2021, where I think at 1080p, the 24 gigabytes of RAM should be fine. I know the M.2 SSD should be fine too, but the four cores, four threads, that will seriously start as uh, when you start putting a big load in Adobe Premiere Pro, it will start stuttering and causing big issues where to the point I've got 18 cores, 36 threads here. And even though I edit at 4K, I can bring this whole system to its knees if I put enough video editing footage through it. And I've actually done this quite a few times, especially when we do the parts hunts, they go from 20 minutes to 30 minutes in video length. And this thing can start to chug even with the best of the best gear overclocked with 128 gigabytes of RAM. So video editing can get very intense and that's just my experience with it. Hope that answers that question. And of course, if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you on another video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.